everyone to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes, his name is Bricky, and we have a special guest here. It's Pat. But before we get into that, if you enjoy today's episode at all and you feel like supporting us on Patreon, head over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, where, by the way, you can follow for free on Google Apple, Facebook. Uh, there's also a free trial, but you do need to put in a credit card at patreon.com slash adeptus ridiculous. You can get access to our Discord, bloopers if they happen. The $15 tier gets you access to all of our posters, which, by the way, Bricky, I believe we have a poster today. Do we not, Shy? Do we or do we not? Do we or do we not have a poster? I don't oh. have a poster. Pat doesn't have a poster. I'm looking at you. have a poster. That's so good. Wait a minute, that's actually incredible. This is the best poster you've ever done. Look at all those dwarfs. Look, Look at, at all, all those dwarfs. They're doing the soy jack pointing emotes. You got a Voton, you got a Deep mm-hmm. Rock, you got mm-hmm. a... It, you're right, it's all the dwarf fans it's together. It's a very pretty picture. Oh, that's the actually gold. incredible. Man, that you, one in the back is jacked. Are you a dwarf fan, Pat? No, I I have enough of that going on in my regular life. Unnecessary <laughs> self-loathing. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm five but- two. What do I need to fucking get into a dwarf faction for? I just need to look in the mirror. Well, maybe you relate, or you maybe no. Like, do you like just- corporations? Do you like to I mine don't. for for someone else's dollar? No. Okay. Well, then, yeah. There's there's nothing there for the for you. Then <laughs> that's that's true. The only also, thing about dwarves do. that appeals to me ever is the Book of Grudges. Ah. That's pretty great. <laughs> I love yes. the Book of Grudge. Yes. Yes, but. This poster, hey, patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. But man, gee whiz, if I wanted a physical version of this poster to put up on my wall, per se, Bricky, where would I get one? Hey, you could check out uh, the merchandise there from Orchid8.com, where you can get the brand new poster as well as a bunch of new other items. However, keep in mind, um, we may have a brand new merch drop coming in October, and it might include... Lots of new dice and lots Ooh. of new products and lots of new stuff. So keep your minds and eyes open for okay. there will there's some new stuff happening. Today's episode, Shai said she has uh, a thing oh for god. me to read. Oh my Ooh, god. That is, uh, you know. There's some <clears> words <throat> there. Okay, okay. So here is what Shai has said. Uh, With Space Marine 2 being wildly successful, a lot of new people are coming into Warhammer, and I wanted to talk about what makes the setting compelling to the old and new fans and the people present here. Uh, We all just saw Concord just come out. Oh, man. (laughs) And eat ass like something I haven't seen since visiting your mom, Shai's words, not mine. Uh, And even if that game was any good to play, literally. It actually really wasn't. Yeah, it didn't look that great. Uh, Literally, no one connected to its characters, lore, universe, setting, or visual design. And with Space Marine, people seem to get into its vibes right away. Oh, hey, before we go any further, I feel like it, it would behoove me to be like, you guys introduced me as Pat, but I'm actually Pat from Pat Stairsat. Oh, yeah, that's, that's point. actually true. We kind of did gloss over that, didn't we? Uh, I stream on yeah. Twitch and I have the Castle Super Beast podcast on usually on Mondays. OK, there we go. Perfect. All right. All right. All right. Now, now, now get out of the <laughs> we way. We're Pat. talking Warhammer. Right now, it's it's definitely like the big renaissance, not necessarily renaissance, but there's a, there's a huge input for Warhammer now. Um, I myself have found my my main like every faction videos receiving a, a massive boost in popularity mm-hmm. again. Oh, yeah, well, everybody watched that one, right? But like just because Space Marine is out, more people are curious about it, so they want to know more mm-hmm. about it. And so I think it's just kind of interesting to talk about how people get into everything. Um, mm. Pat, you yourself, I'm actually kind of curious. How did you get into this universe to begin with? Uh, I Okay, so the original Toe Dip was uh, Relic's Dawn of War. Because oh, same. Uh, I liked Company of Heroes. Is that the timeline? Is that I feel like it went in that direction. Was Company of Heroes first? Or was Company Heroes second? I can't remember. But regardless, I liked real-time strategy games at the time. And I saw this StarCraft game. But it wasn't StarCraft. It was called War- Warhammer. Um, and the Terrans looked way cooler in this game than they did in StarCraft. Because they were head-to-toe in power armor and were yelling, Brother! And all that shit. <laughs> 
Yep. Uh, so then I played Dawn of War, and then I learned about the the you know Space Marines and the Chaos Marines and the Orcs and whatnot. And then I played Winter Assault, where I learned about the Guard. And then I played Dark Crusade, where I learned about the Tau and the Necron. Um, and then after that, every time some kind of Warhammer video game floated past my eye, instead of going, "Huh, I wonder what that is." Okay. What? Oh, it's that Warhammer thing. I wonder if the tower in it. They're not. <laughs> they never are. They're not. Except for that uh, one time they were. Maybe. Yep. Except for, except for that one time they were in a PlayStation 2 game. That's not. Is that Fire Warrior that we just That's don't fire. talk about? Yeah, it's pretty hey, terrible. Hey, man, they're fun to play in Dark Crusade. That's true. Hooray. So, so you're, you got into Warhammer primarily through video games. Full video game uh, 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 buy-in, 100%. Okay. Like, yeah, I remember I, playing Warhammer Curse of the Horned Rat a million years ooh, ago. Ooh, Skaven oh, game? Uh, and that game sucks. So that I didn't sh- that didn't stick with me. Yeah, that probably didn't help. No. Nah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Holy shit, I forgot about this game. Yeah, because I'm like <laughs> entirely sucks. I'm like entirely opposite because I have played I played very few Warhammer games because I was super not into like RTS games. Mm-hmm. Uh I got into Warhammer because um, Shy and her old art streams would always be talking about like how cool the orcs were, and everything orc related in 40k just seems so stupidly amusing to me. Mm-hmm. With like the wa energy, the imagination, that I was like, I need to look into this at some point. And so I just got into it from purely a God, the orcs are crazy, and just kind of delve deeper into the rabbit hole from there. Mm-hmm. If, what if we you, don't Ricky? mind, I don't actually. Sorry, yeah, if we if we don't mind, um, I found the box art of a Shadow of the Horned Rat oh, on the Shadow PlayStation the One. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> what <laughs> that... a what a vibe! <laughs> that's me uh... right back. Mm, that's um, old. To, to answer your question, it's kind of twofold. Um, I I knew I had a buddy who was really into Space Marine One uh, back when it came out, way back when. Uh, I do remember before that playing Dawn of War 1, and I think I started with Dawn of War 2, uh, but I then played a lot of Dawn of War 1 because there was like a Game Shack, one of like, like a PC bong kind of back in the day mm-hmm. that had those on it. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. And I hate to admit this, but I mainly played Eldar um, because wow. it was, I know it's wild to hear, right? They don't even um, feel fun in that game. So it was it was because of the warp spiders and their teleporting stuff. It was really yeah. cool. That was in Dawn of War 2, at least. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then from there, I started reading a few of the books. There's actually a hilarious picture of me at like 17 in the ugliest chair known to man reading uh, Mm -hmm. Pandarax, which is um, a Grey Knight Dark Angel apocalypse book. Um, But from there, I eventually got back into it because my Dairy Queen manager... Uh, was a huge Warhammer guy, and he's this like, is like the most Warhammer story ever." Like, I know it really is. Uh, he, we had a long eight-hour shift, and I didn't really know enough about the factions. And he was like, "You're gonna learn today." And then I bought myself Grey Knights because I was like, "What the hell are you telling me? All these Marines are psychers?" And then we played a bunch of Seventh Edition, and it sucked. And then I quit, yeah. and then I then I came back in Eighth Edition and bought Guard, and I liked it a lot more. I think it's super impressive. Um, like Games Workshop uh, is occasionally insanely evil um and yeah. short-sighted yeah uh, but there is one thing about them that they've been really really far-sighted about so 3d printing is going to annihilate their core business model eventually like not now maybe not even soon but like the the miniatures are like prime items to be 3d printed yeah um and so they have like spent like decades just hey man you want books we got books hey you want you want uh you want art stuff we, we got art so let's make it let's make painting the mini more important than the mini itself <laughs> you like you guys like video games we got video games and yep. now and now they're gonna be going like did you like superman well he's helping us make a, a tv show yeah, I mean, you might as well diversify, like if yeah. you can, and and go past just oh, hey, we've got really cool minis. It's like, well, now we've got really great video games that everybody loves, and you know, mm-hmm. I I definitely think uh, sometimes people often ask me like why why buy some of the minis instead of the three D printing, and for the for the most part, I always tell them the same thing. It's kind of like that Gabe Newell quote where he's like, piracy is not a. Uh, it's like not, 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 it's not a cost or like whatever issue. It's not. It's a um, service service issue. service issue. Yeah, like 
no matter at the moment, at the, at the moment of recording this, 3D printing your miniatures is fine, but it does not hold a candle to plastic. Games exactly. Workshop's plastic is incredibly good quality, and their their sculpts are amazing. Uh, and I can't find a single 3D printer that does it as well as as they do. And so so uh, so long as we keep that, we're chilling. Yeah. So um, like I, but those days are numbered. Of, um, when I was in high school, and uh, I convinced my dad that a CD burner would be a really good investment. Um, and, he, ah. and he was like. Pat, that's like two hundred fifty dollars. It's like three hundred dollars, right? I'm like, no, 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 don't worry about it. I got it. I got it. I got it. And um, and the CD burner was a really good investment because I sold like hundreds of copies of StarCraft um that summer. Um, because legitimately, of course. Yeah, no, super legit. I, I was allegedly super, legitimate. I was selling and, uh every kid at school my lending version of StarCraft and Brood War for ten dollars a fucking disc when the Brood discs War. cost a dollar. Um, but that was because when you burnt a CD, it was for all intents and purposes identical, right? Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. 3d printing is both not as ubiquitous as a, as a, as a, um, as a CD burner is, or was at the time, but also the quality difference is like, it's, it's a, it's, you know, it's a, it's a tangible quality difference. So like there's time, those minis have time before, you know, everybody's uncle has a 3d printer. That's just as good as a manufacturer. Like they probably got like fifteen more years, but uh, I do I do want to kind of talk a little bit about um, the the whole getting into forty k, especially as a bit recently. Uh, I was playing Space Marine two, and I was thinking the whole time I was thinking about uh, talking to you guys even before uh, Shy invited me here, right? Because mm-hmm. you guys are are my my contacts for big Warhammer nerd shit. Aww. And I was looking at it. I'm like, why is this just so like it's it's like getting in there like I feel it in my chest. And I came up with the phrase uh, that I use sometimes just too much is never enough. Um, and Warhammer as a a IP franchise, you know, concept is a as far as I can tell, you guys can obviously correct me if I'm wrong. But it feels like a a a franchise that was built backwards. So usually what you would have is a fiction. Like, let's take Star Wars, right? You have the movie. And the toys come from the movie. And the toys replicate Han Solo and Luke Skywalker, etc. Right? And yeah. because kids or adults really like the movie, they want a Han Solo doll. Or they want a, a, a you know, whatever, right? They want a, a R2-D2, right? Yep. Warhammer yes. did it backwards in which the toy is the first item. Yeah. Here comes the toy and every single thing that has ever happened after that ever is a sell on why that tiny little plastic guy is actually the coolest dude you've ever fucking seen in your life. Like everything is backwards. Mm-hmm. Here's the cool design and it's design first. Like all the units always look incredible. Mm-hmm. But I want an emotional resonance with this character. So I'll take the Ultramarines, who are as generic as it gets <laughs> in, in fucking Warhammer, right? Yes, yes, they are. Okay, let's take let's take Space Marine. Let's humanize one Ultramarine, Titus. Yep. Yep. And let's show you what being an ultramarine is is like and what kind of stuff they're up to. And by the mm-hmm. end, I'm like, yeah, okay. I don't really dig the Roman aesthetic that the ultramarines go for, but yeah, these guys are cool. Like I'd never roll an ultramarine army, but like I don't hate them you as much it. as I did before I played Space Marine. Mhm. Um, uh, hell, I, I almost feel like Space Marine, Space Marine Two specifically, is practically meant to sell you guard models. Yeah, oh, the, <laughs> like, see, yeah, the, I like, yeah, I love, like, I go through that campaign and I'm like, man, the guard though, so cool. They're well, so they're, they're so good. upstanding. Katia, some of them are even fighting off the effects of the warp, and yeah, I and, I can, and like then I I I, I uh, I'm chilling in my chat and someone in my chat goes, "Hey, has Paige, my wife and uh, also streamer Peach Saliva, has Paige seen the Necron?" I'm like, "No, she has oh. not seen the Necron." Oh. Uh, and so I showed her a picture of a Necron, and she went, "Oh, what the fuck is this? I love this. I'm into Warhammer now." Mm-hmm. And she is now looking at reading the Infinite and the Divine. 
Oh, let's go. There's a special yeah. edition of that coming out soon. And, and it looks really great. Like, Guys. like that stems from what if the little skeletons were robots? Okay, how do we make the little skeletons and the robots more interesting than just being a complete banger, like visual design? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's let's allow people to make a bunch of RTS games and Mechanicus and write a bunch of books about them so that people know that they're not just cool looking. They're really cool. Also. Yeah, I, 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 I do not find much fault with that, like logic. Um, like even even with like the the books, like I feel like for me, like the big turning point that made Ultramarines like, hey, I don't hate Blue Bears was like, um, I mean, I don't even really read them. It's like this Ultramarine omnibus, and like one of the like worst things, the Demon Kalaba happens in it, and it's like, oh, it's just it's terrible. But this one Ultramarine is just going through it he's struggling, he's failing, chaos is all around him, and it's just like, hey. He's just a dude. Like he's not perfect. He's he's relatable. Yeah, I he's like nine him. and a half feet tall and has ten hearts and four stomachs. But like, yeah. But it's like it's interesting. He's not just the little boy scout that's just oh the Codex Astartes does not uh, agree with this action. Blah blah blah. He's like he's he's a dude, and I like him. And he struggles, and he goes through it. And it's not just he's not just this perfect little blueberry that I expect him to be. And it gives me a reason. It gives me pause to be like, hey, maybe. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad to have a little uh, ultramarine guy, you know, even if it's just for decoration or something. So, you know, yeah, I, I agree. What you said there, DK, made me really think about something. You okay. know who's so important to, like, my personal understanding of the ultramarines and also the Space Marine 2 and Space Marine 1 plots is fucking Leandros. Leandros is like oh, such Leandros. a stupid little bitch. Yes, he is. He, and like he is like everything that is wrong with the Ultramarines, like he's everything. The worst. Uh, he doesn't even follow the Codex Astartes and he's just so, oh, well, and, and follow the Codex gets to be this perfect foil for yes. every other character. Yeah, yes. I, I yep. mean, that 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 is kind of the dynamic that I liked a lot in, in the first game, even, even though I'm pretty harsh on the first game. I found the squad dynamic pretty good because you have like Titus, who's like kind of your generic guy. And then you get Sidonis, who is the the grizzled vet. Mm-hmm. And then you have Leo, like Leandros, who's like so, like brand new, like soy boy, <laughs> like a little little baby bitch. When people think Ultramarines, they think Leandros. Yeah. Um, I think you're right. I when I used to think of the Ultramarines as as Leandros, like all of them were just Leandros. Oh, and slowly as more characters got introduced to me, I was like, oh, they're not all these little Boy Scout bitches that always just, oh, what does the Codex of Thirty say? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, definitely helped. To uh, just Shy has something uh, interesting to say where she says they still do oh. lore backwards. For example, we want to update the Space Marine line, just updating models and saying these are the same guys redone. They instead add Primaris Marines with their own lore and keep both in universe. Yeah, there, there's, there's that. Um, I mean, sometimes they just kind of like just roll it. Uh, for example, the Imperial Guard got a new tank called the Rogel Dorn because they have the Lehman Russ tank named after Lehman Russ and they got a Rogel Dorn tank named after Rogel Dorn. And they basically were like, yeah, this isn't a new tank. This tank has always been there. And they just kind of like you retroactively it. did it. It was just like off camera. Yeah, they they, they we do just that. Found they do the that SCC sometimes. for it. Of course, it's always been here. Um, it, it is kind of that thing where yeah, as things got bigger, it's like all right, well now we need to write a, a lore for our funny Grim Reaper man, and his name is more Terrigan, and then he got kind of stinky, and then he became a moth, and now he's big, and then there's like all the reasons for it, and it's so funny his too minis. because. That's like kind of half the fun, right? Is like you take the Warhammer aesthetic, you take the world, you take the the genuinely like morally and existentially crushing life to be lived in this universe while making it goofy as shit and playing it with a straight face. It's yeah. such a <laughs> hard line to walk and they often fail, but when they do it, it's the it's that fun. Oh it's yeah, a, when it hits, it hits. It's a universe entirely defined by the TV trope, the rule of cool. Like, yeah. yeah. Hey, we're going to write a backstory for this. Oh, what would fit in? No, no, no. What would be cool? We'll fit it in. We'll <laughs> yeah. we'll just if you keep writing long enough, you can fit it in somewhere. 
And you know, I think that's kind of the beauty. I didn't know Mortarian in... was a fucking moth now. He looks awesome as shit, by the way. Oh, yeah, his mini is so great. I would be scared to paint it. But yeah, that I think tough. that's that's like one of the cool things about 40K is it is such like an expansive, crazy universe. You can fit anything in it. And it, it, it could work. Like, it could be a completely grimdark. It could be like a... I don't want to say a rom com, but like there's very it would be hard to find like a theme that just would not fit in 40k. Just write something that's cool; it'll work. They do children's I, books for 40k. Apparently, yeah, they did. Uh, apparently, they're I, actually good. Oh, really? Apparently, they're genuinely decent. Like they, I had them, heard that they did them, but I was like, "There's no way that works." Right? I'm, I'm pretty sure it opens up with like Warhammer the kids' parents. Yeah, I, th- I think like the kids' parents or something like killed by like a death mark. Or something like that, and then they're like trying to get away. I, I don't. Ent- I might be a little bit wrong on that one, but there's definitely a Necron attack one, and it goes along with that concept. I it's saw one. It's called uh, "Plague of the Nurglings," and it's a bunch of kids fighting the forces of Nurgle. That's so what? funny to think about, considering wow. they are so dead. All right. Um, well, but, hey, but yeah, a- like, anything can work. There, there's a thing that now I'm, I may be taking this one too literally, but super often in the openings of Warhammer. So they talk about the Imperium and they talk about how it stretches over a million worlds. And it, that I it, like that said, and I don't know if it's just being hyperbole to kind of like show the grindness of the Imperium. But if there were actually a million, genuinely a million colonized Imperial planets, I would believe that. Like can, well, can, space is big. Space is yeah, huge. Space is, yeah, you cannot comprehend it. And at that point, it does make it to the point where, like, I mean, without, I mean, we're not going too deep into spoilers here in this particular uh, uh, stream. There's but spoilers? For for, 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 sp- for Space Marine 2. Uh, um, don't, I don't, I don't want to go into two spoilers, but, like, one of the planets you go on is called a burial world. Yeah. And a, <laughs> yeah. Bur- and a burial world is is literally just an entire planet whose whole purpose is to bury people because it's the highest honor you can get is to have your body buried uh-huh. instead, instead of like just ground thrown in the ditch to be eaten yeah. by the orcs or whatever or yeah. ground up in corpse starch or something like that that it's an entire world dedicated to burying people who are like heroes and that's just yep. kind of I don't know it's just kind of like such a such, you think it's such a waste but in reality I have to like say it's, something you know? about um the video game Warhammer storylines Sure. Uh, you using the term spoiler for any of them is really funny. Um, <laughs> because uh, as a non Warhammer like lore nerd, as somebody who's just like, ha Space Marine hit the hit the, the bug. Um, the the plots of every single Warhammer game, except for maybe Rogue Trader, are always exactly the same. They're the same every time. <laughs> Did you know that chaos is bad news? <laughs> listen, listen, Pat. Yeah. Listen, Pat. All right, we've had we've had a week. All right, all right. We're, we're our our opinions on Space Marine Two <laughs> were not taken great. So so we're <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna scoot like. I'm with you, brother, but we're gonna smooth right no, past actually, that. Say, I, uh, I checked out part of your uh, your review, and I happened to click on the moment that I would disagree with the most, which oh, was no. like, there's a moment where you say, "Hey, they would never be able to do this. They would be atomized the instant they tried it." Um, and I'm like, "But it's cool, though." Yeah. <laughs> so that <laughs> that, that was cool, right? <laughs> that was partially me me misspeaking a little bit too. Um, apparently the, uh, the, the devs have confirmed that it was not what I thought it was. And it was actually like pocket dimension. Oh, cool. Whatever. And, and like a Q and a or whatever, which I mean, you write enough. You just keep writing more. It's the rule of cool. <laughs> it, it did look cool. That's the entire thing looked cool. That's for certain. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. That, that, that whole thing looked cool. But anyway, um, yeah. Uh, Pat, have you read many Warhammer novels? I've read zero pages of zero Warhammer novels. Okay. Very often, because we we talk about this a bit, like Rule of Cool. I, I very often, when I recommend people Warhammer books, I never recommend them the best ones, because I think the best ones require a bit of, like, for, like, knowledge. That's um, probably true. But all the ones I do recommend are almost always just, hey, this is already established property, but with Warhammer coat of paint. Like Mission Impossible or James Bond or right. Blade Runner, um, and it, it helps a lot with that kind of stuff. It's it's a uh, yeah. It's I had handy. A, I had a moment where I was like, 
I think I, I, you know, Warhammer's cool. I want to maybe dive into that. Maybe I'll take a look at and more Warhammer. And then I, then I typed into Google and I, and I said, how do I start reading Warhammer? And Google spat oh, out no. this picture. Oh no! I was gonna say it's the Horus Heresy picture, isn't it? It's the it's the it's the fifty plus book uh, uh, that you need a guy to read through. It don't, sure is. It sure don't the fuck start is. with the Horus Heresy book. I saw that I feel and like... I was like, you know what? Maybe I'm gonna go back. <laughs> Maybe I'm gonna go back to reading One Piece, huh? Oh I, I, boy, I hate, I hate that image and I love that image because that image perfectly encapsulates the stupidity. But yeah. I, I mean, if you were to read the entire Horus Heresy, you probably shouldn't need that image. You just read it in order. Yeah, it's, it's and and order. and like Shy said, like we we jump from like what well, Shy says, book fifty four is one of the ones we started on, and then mm-hmm. we jump to like the first one, and it's like like are they all connected? Sure, but I don't think you need to read all of them in a very specific. Well, maybe some of them, but like you can. Well, jump you need around. to read the ones that are like direct sequels to one another in a row. I sure. Assume. Yeah. 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 Well, but, yeah, but, like we read, um, what was it, book 36, which I think is the first heretic. The first heretic. And you don't yeah. need to read the Horus Harris or the, the, the Horus Rising, the first one, to be able to appreciate the first heretic. I think right? it's so, really fascinating because I look at this and what I, th- I think I understand what you're saying because I think I could sum up the Horus Heresy in like four sentences. <laughs> right? You probably could. Like the Emperor of Mankind is a really bad father. Horus didn't like that and got all that chaos juice. Big war. Horus dead emperor in the chair. Like, yeah, I mean, that is the TLDR version of it, right? And then at some point, someone said, do you want to take one of those sentences and stretch it over 200,000 words? And a lot of people (laughs) were like, yeah, actually. Yeah, well, I mean that that's also one of the things the the Warhammer community loves all of the little details, right? We, I I want to know what Horace was thinking right before he almost I want to know every little iota, right? We want all of the details. We want all of the nitty gritty stuff. So, yeah. Why not? Why not yeah, span why not? it over 200,000 books that are, generally speaking, all pretty good? And then it feeds back into well, well, itself mm. with... Oh, sorry, after you. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm just, let's not say they're all pretty good. War I Hammer said generally. That's a, a lot of crap in it. A, <laughs> generally um, speaking. <laughs> but, I, I mean, I, I've been told... I mean, well, the first book, Horus Rising, as we know, DK, is... Phenomenal. Ph- fantastic. Not mm. just a good Warhammer book, just a good book. Um. And, and yeah, that's uh, yeah, that, that's that's definitely shy makes a good point. You can read Bloodlines and think, oh, it's a cool cyberpunk sci-fi novel without knowing what forty k is. But if you do, you're like, oh my god, I know why they're having troubles with supplies because the sick of Drix maledictum. One of the Bloodlines is literally like Blade Runner. You, uh, it's a, uh, it's just a right. There's no space marines, no Xenos. It's just a cop, and he's mm-hmm. dealing with like a noble family's missing um, uh, daughter. I think. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. and, and it's it's. Like it's maybe one of my favorite forty k books. It's phenomenal. So like, they're like, oh yeah, they have supply issues. It's like, oh yeah, well we know the supply issues are because the galaxy split in half. Uh, but you know, life goes on. So interesting. You know, you said something there that's interesting because it makes me think about the video that Shy put out. Which uh, in Space Marine Two, there's like a weird issue in that there's not one civilian in the entire game. There's not it's one normal really person in the that's... whole fucking game. There's you have <laughs> you you have serfs. Anyway, my point being uh, past that is that like I have played the 40k video. I played damn near half of the 40k video games. There's a million that I have. Ooh, right? Wow. Uh, I played a lot of them. I think they're cool. Um, mm-hmm. Even if I don't get that far into them. But like I think Rogue Trader is the only one that even addresses the fact that normal people actually live in this setting. Rogue Trader's gr- uh, like, Rogue like, Trader, what it did for nobility in terms of the 40k aesthetic is unprecedented. Well, I felt so stupid, dude, because I Rogue Trader was coming out and I'm like, oh yeah, people need to buy things. Yeah. Like in like, <laughs> yeah. like a- a- Abelard, we need to buy things, yeah. But like Space Marine like like uh, uh games and Space Marine like, you know, iconography paints a lot of the setting as like a total fascist dictatorship like mm-hmm. military complex that like 
every single person is in the army or in a factory or whatever. DK and Shy, I don't know if you guys use TikTok at all. I'm obsessed with it. It's a dying app for a dying world. Um, <laughs> no, I've literally never logged into TikTok. Okay, so there is a big old meme going on on uh, with Space Marine clips where it's um, somebody made an AI generated cover of I'm Still Standing with a Space Marine oh. voice. <laughs> Okay. Um, where it, the guy, it is a space Marine, like screaming the lyrics of I'm still standing to people's <laughs> clips Okay, because it's really funny and whatnot. Sure. The core appeal of Warhammer and the space Marines is this very specific moment from an elder scrolls trailer where a human fighter beats the piss out of a p- full party of people oh and yeah a regular big human fighter specifically to the music of someday love will find you yeah and that's warhammer's appeal which is like listen we got rat dudes we got chaos freaks we got elves we got uh fucking everything orcs. we got <laughs> zombies we got skeletons we got vampire Mm -hmm. lords we got tomb kings we got vampire pirates right and Mm -hmm. i'm like a normal guy with like a normal gun and a normal sword Mm -hmm. and i'm gonna hit them real hard yeah and then 40k is like you know expands that further and further and further and it's like well they have to be really big and you know but the the who's the most powerful guy in the world the emperor of mankind even while dead is the (laughs) greatest dude to ever fucking uh, aliens quiver in fear of his skeleton and at some point i'm playing rogue trader and they're talking about the nobility and all this shit like oh yeah no people have to live in the setting like like, (laughs) yeah yeah that that's that's the great part about the nobility is that's part of the reason why I like bloodlines they do a lot of that uh but the the noble class in 40k is like they always they always live at the top of those spires in the hive worlds you see like they they literally live above the clouds and they cannot even see the peasants uh, and that's yeah. half of what rogue trader is and it was really cool to Hard. watch Especially because one of the first side missions you get in that game is like, hey, the lower decks are are revolting. Abelard, kill the poor. And that's just like one of the options you can do is like, yeah, rogue trader, our families are freezing to death because you're saving like money on air conditioning. And it's like, that kind of sucks. Kill them. Like that, that's just we have how a much greater happens. purpose. I, yeah. I wish I could play more of rogue trader, but that game has the owl cat problem. Um, yeah, where act three onwards is like barely functioning. Not that problem. Ooh. Oh, the, it's a larger problem. So Alcat does this thing. So they did the Pathfinder, did two Pathfinder games, and now they do Rogue Trader, where mm-hmm. they will add. It's a it's a long narrative RPG that they are adding bits and pieces that go in random places for like five years after it comes out. Oh, so like I'm playing Pathfinder: Wrath of the Righteous right now. They are teasing. Four years after its release, hey, we're going to improve the Gold Dragon Path. So if uh, if you're playing it, uh, wait. If you're playing Gold Dragon or uh, or huh. play it again, and, like these are massive hundred hour long games. <laughs> wow! Like, so they're just putting in something for like, oh hey, we've updated the chapter one thing. Hope you're not eighty hours in and on chapter sixteen, there are, dude. There are two season passes for Wrath of the Righteous, and oh, one of uh, them adds a uh, one of them adds a character that joins your party in Act One. Oh, in the second season pass. Ah, that's so that's I a look lot. At Rogue Trader, and I'm like, I will love to play Rogue Trader in six years, <laughs> in seven yeah. years when, when all the season passes come out, and a side <laughs> story, and six extra party members. I, I also, unfortunately, had the the huge problem of not being a fully voice acted game directly after Baldur's Gate three basically blew Uh-oh. everyone's pants off. Yeah, and that's that's the whole reason I couldn't super get into Rogue Trader is because I played so much Baldur's Gate three that I was like, oh god, this is what a CRPG no, it's an old should be fashion like. Fashion CRPG, man. Yeah, yeah, and and like Rogue Trader is really good, but I was like, shit, I just want more Baldur's Gate three. Damn it. Well, but, you're not gonna get that again for like ten years. Yeah, yeah. Th- like games like that don't just come along. That's like a rarity. Like, but I was like, God, that blew and, me away so much that I'm just like, 
<laughs> why can't I play Rogue Trader anymore? I played the beta and I loved it. Why don't I love it now? And I'm like, oh no. It also oh no, my brain has been negatively like, affected. Like Warhammer voice acting tends to be like super unique in its level of bombasticness. It's yeah. so good. It's, oh, yeah. it's everyone is an angry British zealot. Everyone's and it's fantastic, so ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that's actually one of the or things Hooligan. that I find really enjoyable about like like Dark Tide. Dark Tide has its problems. Don't get me wrong. It's definitely been fixing them a bit more recently. They're, uh, uh, they're putting out a big big patch uh in a week yeah yeah the atomization update i'm actually really excited for that one i think it's gonna it looks like it's gonna be pretty good uh but um like dark tide one thing it did insanely well was it did that bombastic voice acting oh to a yeah tee. when when they added all the new abilities and i got all my guardsmen like shouting at the top of their lungs <laughs> like, I was like this is peak peak 40k concepts mm-hmm. and it's it's hard to pull off you know like how the entire universe is hard to pull off just everything is a factory and a church and everyone is a religious zealot under like a horrible dictatorship that hates everyone while yep. also, you know, having a bunch of lobotomized slaves do all your jobs and the worst cable management you've ever yeah, seen with 40,000 candles. It's a it's a really strange setting because like it, it is definitely a setting of like just write more. Just, just write, just write more, and you'll, you'll, you can write as much as you want, and just add as much as you want. Just write more, but mm-hmm. uh, all of that old stuff, y- y- yeah, that's sacrosanct. You, no, this is how a space marine fucking acts. Space, space marines aren't going to be sitting around the campfire telling jokes, no. ever. Unless you were in the Horus Heresy, that's then you, true. Then, then they were. Then you have warrior lodges where they're getting drunk yeah. together and being bros, and yeah. But uh, Dark Tide probably has. Um, obviously rolling back to dark tide that battle barge where you just start off is like the most peak 40k design ever like just that little mission like area with the big screen in the middle and like the scope of it all and you're looking at in the galaxy you've got all the servitors rolling around hey, um, and it's gonna, such oh well, go ahead i'm gonna say something controversial Uh oh Uh oh about that's about warhammer so oh, okay. I so, think yeah. Space Marine 2 and Space Marine 1 are fucking awesome. I really like okay. Dark Tide, and I think Rogue Trader is really cool. I also love the Dawn of War series, etc., etc., etc. Okay, softening the blow. Let's okay. go. Yep, I, yep. Uh, I also like Mechanicus, and I'm playing another run of Chaos Gate right now. Okay, um, okay. Cl- classic Reddit post. You got to make sure you have your allegiance. Those games are hard as fuck. They're, <laughs> they're really, really difficult. Um, I think... Warhammer in games and also like animation and TV and whatnot might have a broader appeal to the wider audience if it wasn't so obsessed with playing as a Space Marine chapter or the Imperial Guard. Like, oh, the, like the Warhammer games in particular <clears throat> are obsessed with the Imperium of Man. Like, yeah. It is like nine times out of ten, your primary like protagonist force is the Imperium, and I'm well aware that they represent like a disproportionate amount of like the tabletop um like armies. Yeah. but like it's so much. Like Shy is asking if I played the Dawn of War Retribution Orcs campaign. No, I haven't. I actually just got Dawn of War Two working last night because uh, it doesn't uh, like Windows Eleven or uh, multi cores. Um. um like, 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 I'm thinking of like blood teeth and shooters as like an example. Oh, that was so good, so short, but and how like, even though I don't like that game as much as Bolt Gun, I appreciate its existence more than Bolt, Bolt Gun because mm-hmm. Bolt Gun is what if you were a Space Marine and you shot dudes? Yeah, what if you were an Ultra Ultra Marine and just you know we're killing greater demons all on your own and yeah yeah well, like, i'm well aware was, was... we're never going to be playing as a tyranid as a main character that's <laughs> probably not going to happen hey you give me a game where i can play as like a swarm lord i'd be very happy but like that. mechanicus 2's hey, big update is yeah they have the ability to play as the necron i'm yeah. extreme i'm yeah. extremely hyped about that it's like, i love the necron i never get to play as the necron i got to play as everybody the loves once. the necrons yeah twice twice dead king and infinite divine like, like Necrons have like five books in total, and they're all like B plus or higher, Ma- yeah. like mostly A's and S tiers. They're incredible, uh, and I, I think I old guys kissed. I do agree. <laughs> <laughs> I do agree 
Uh, that that def- obviously like they want to do lots of Imperium stuff because humans and etc. And obviously, Space Marines are a very iconic looking thing. And but the most popular. I, I do feel like, despite its issues, Rogue Trader was the biggest departure from that kind of thing because you weren't well, a you guardsman. To- you were you were a noble. You were like the no- yep. nobility, and you well, and you, you had get to squad mates. Talk to Eldar in that yeah. game, right? Multiple kinds well, of Eldar, l- mm-hmm. like with your words and not your gun. Yeah, there's there is a little bit of gun. Yeah, I know, but you like, get to you get to watch him steal a son. Well, like the, it, there, there's yeah. a really famous, very old, completely intellectually dishonest Doom review from '93 that um, John Carmack and and John Romero hated, and uh, Tim Rogers brings up in his Doom review that's like four and a half hours long. You should watch that. The the Tim Rogers, you should watch Tim Rogers. Um, and in this Doom review, it says, "What if you could talk to the demons, though?" Uh, wouldn't that be more interesting? And it's like a completely ridiculous thing to say in 1993 when Doom was like the creation of the first person shooter. Yeah. Um, but in Warhammer, actually, though, I actually do want to play more games in which I can talk. I want to talk to an orc about anything. <laughs> anything. <laughs> Well, you there are a couple of books where uh, orcs have conversations with people that you might like them. Okay, well, guess what? You've successfully sold me better on on reading any Warhammer book than anything yeah. I've ever seen before. What was it, Bricky? The Big Daka that uh, had the the Big Daka's main characters. It's called yeah, it's called the Big Daka. Mm-hmm. The main characters are an orc war boss and a dark Eldar archon. Those are it's it's entirely Drukari and orcs, and it's a banger. Yeah, yeah, there's good stuff there. No, I, I mean full full stop. I I 100 agree. I guess G like we talked earlier. GW is a little you know they're a little evil. They're a little lost of stuff, but they they specifically really? are just they're they have like a like a new script on their IP. They're they're oh, terrified yeah. of it going anywhere, and and from. Yeah. Talking with a couple of of folks who will remain nameless, there's a lot of things that you may have expected to occur or whatever that don't because GW is like, nope, they don't act that way. It doesn't work that way. You can't do it that way. They're very harsh on their IP, which is for sometimes better, but I think at the moment, especially with the up and up, maybe a little bit worse. I feel like you need to be a little bit more flexible. It's really fascinating um that they're so strict on stuff like that but they're not strict on like quality so yeah like i can't speak to yeah. books cuz i haven't read them but the the i would like to play a warhammer game experience runs the entire 10 point scale of quality like there is some t- fucking garbage that you can play that has the warhammer name on it yeah um like look like at all the Dawn mobile War games 3 and then there's great shit. Some of the best games you've ever played, like Dawn of War 2. Yeah. Yep. I mean, people don't even remember that there's like 19 fucking like car, digital card game mobile Yeah, apps the amount right of now. like mobile gotcha cash grab you Warhammer mean games that are on the. The game that's invaded my phone ever since I talked about Space Marine. Every ad I get is for Tacitus or whatever the fuck it's called. Tac- Tac- Tacticus? 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 Did Tacticus? you know Never? Titus, the Ultramarine, coming to Tacticus? Yeah, <laughs> did not know that. I just know there are like a million of them. Like anytime I go into the app store, it's like there's like 50 of them. And, and I, like, you know, wow. I actually clicked on it. And I was like, if this looks like a cool game, I will play it. And then it's like, it's complete mobile garbage. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's actually it's one of the yeah, reasons it's so why weird I was... that they've got such a new script on their IP. But the let's sh- like that slide just do mobile cash grab garbo. So it makes sense, actually. Uh, so there's a video that I've been referencing for weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh-huh. Uh, it's by a, a, a content creator called Racevic, R A Y C E V. Oh, we love Racevic. Okay, Friend of the so channel. Racevic. We've had him on before. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He's he great. Made a incredible video called "I'm Jealous of Warhammer." Yeah, I watched that um, one. <laughs> and in that video, he describes that he is a massive, massive, huge fucking mark for Mass Effect. He's so into Mass Effect, but Mass Effect has three and a half games and like six books and a comic, mm. and that's it. Yep. And like on in general, the games are excellent. The books are terrible, <laughs> and the comics fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he looks over. It's like, well, what if I was into Warhammer? Oh my god! <laughs> like you, t- he he brings up like probably the best example, <laughs> which is you go I, like you type the word Warhammer into the Steam search bar, 
and you mm-hmm. get like a ton of like, stuff. God, I, I'm I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm still scroll like like there's over a hundred results there, right? Yeah. And like, yeah, they range in quality, but they're all thematically consistent. And you will find a good one in any genre you want to play. Yeah. Yeah. Like, do I want to play an RPG? Here's Rogue Trader. Do I want to play a side scroller? Here's Blood Teeth and Shooters. Do I want to play Doom? Here's Bolt Gun. Do I want to play uh, a prestige multiplayer co op game? Here's uh, Space Marine. Do I want to play Left 4 Dead? Here's Dark Tide. Do you want? Do I want to play um, Ship Commander? You'll play Gothic. <laughs> it's Gothic. Yeah, yeah. Ba- Battlefleet Gothic, Gothic. Battlefleet Gothic. Do yeah. I want to play XCOM? You can play an XCOM mod uh, in 94 on original XCOM. You can play Chaos Gate. You can play Mechanicus. You can play Mechanicus 2. Um, there's no fighting game. Fucking there's no do fighting it. game. Fucking do Although it. Although you you could make a banger of a fighting game with characters from uh, Warhammer. The only so, problem so, with uh, a Warhammer fighting game would be the problem that I've been talking about with 2XKO, the League of Legends fighting game, is that you're dealing with a, a roster of potentially like 400 fucking units. And no matter what units you put in the Warhammer fighting game, everyone's going to be fucking mad as shit that they didn't get the unit they wanted to get in there. True, they didn't get their favorite character. Yeah. Also, the power scaling would be totally off. Which doesn't matter. It's a fighting game. It doesn't matter. I know, it's a fighting game. I know. Okay. I know, I know, I know no, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I know. I'm aware. I know. Other people don't know. You could put a fucking you could put you so a Warhammer fighting game is a is a three on three fighting game like Marvel. And that way you can add shit like a Tyranid Swarm Lord and have them be the one character that's a big body character versus three normal characters like you oh, totally yeah, do you it could. yeah um side note uh, it's an interesting thing that we talked about there because you mentioned all the various kinds of warhammer games but for me with the exception of rogue trader and like two campaigns in dawn of war the one thing that we haven't gotten is a massive narrative experience that actually rivals the books i mm-hmm. saw a po- i saw a post I think it was like a Tumblr post like that recently. And it was probably my favorite post I've ever read, which is that quote, there are two kinds of 40 K books, uh, spaceman shoot bad guys with big gun and yes. meditations on the dehumanizing nature of war and the futility of mutual kindness in the face of suffocating <laughs> oppression and prejudice by as Karazoth, the child flenser. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, absolutely. And I, yeah. I think one of the reasons why I was I was so harsh on on my on the Space Marine Two review and stuff is because I kind of think was thinking I was like this is the time, like I, it's going to be shoot man shoot gun. Don't get me wrong, but this might be the time where we get shoot man shoot gun with like real story. No, and here's like, like, the real like, story. Thing. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. You and ready I, and the, I was wrong, and I was the sad. core narrative thread of Space Marine Two. What if Leandros wasn't a little bitch? Oh yeah, because I mean, Gadriel is just wrong. Gadriel is just Leandros, but like cool. Yeah, he's and Leandros like, for sixty percent of the game, and he's like, "What if I took this stick out my ass?" Yeah, exactly. Because he, he totally is, and he's just like, "Oh hey, I understand you. Cool. We're we're bros now, as we should be." Instead of like, "I'm turning you into the Inquisitor." The other theme is that the bigger and older you get, the cooler you are. Like, I don't know who Calgar is, but he seems cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, 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 they sucked him off so hard in that scene. But that he was scene. so cool. I know. But oh, like, I'm, just imag- you- I'm just imagining someone who just doesn't know who Calgar is and being like, why is this dude getting a slow-mo I had scene? N- I had no idea who that guy is. And then I- everyone is like, oh, it's Jesus Christ descending from the <laughs> I know about Calgary, and even I was like, ooh, I like that. I don't even like Ultramarines, and ooh, he's so cool. And I Uh, asked my chat, like, oh, is that the Primarch? And they're like, no, he's a captain. And I'm like, he's the chapter master. Yeah, he's chapter master. (laughs) It's so it's so fun. I, I don't know. I've I've gotten I've gotten burned by Star Wars too much for my holy fuck. It's glip. It's it's glup shitto. You know what? And, <laughs> and so I was like, <laughs> it's uh, shitto. I wasn't as big on the on the Borbia scrunculus thing, but it was. Um, you know what? Even Star so. Wars is a great example because Star Wars has yeah. been like because you mentioned like it's a little frustrating how strict uh Warhammer can be with its like its narrative and how how like rock solid everything has to be. Like you want to look at Star Wars and see what happens when the people in charge go, do whatever. Who cares? And it's like the on the main pieces. Like the, oh, the, the yeah. And like all the fall off bits from that. And like 
Like they threw they threw away their entire expanded universe to start redoing it again worse than the first time. Yeah, significantly worse, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, so, 100%, but uh, obviously I don't, you know, there there's a middle ground clearly. Yeah, yeah there is. sure. Yeah, yeah. I I don't want them to be like, "Ah, go for it. Let Ryan Johnson do your thing. I don't care." I, I but I I, I <laughs> hey, would you, I would hey, like I would like I'm a little say else controversial. Oh, oh, no. oh, 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 we got, oh, yeah. we got last Jedi thoughts here. Okay. Here's the last Jedi thought. Uh, and this is a thought that I've talked to uh, Wooly over at Wooly versus and also on the castle super beast thing. We talked mm-hmm. about it right after the movie came out. If last Jedi had ended when uh, um, Adam driver holds his hand out and says, let's go make something different. And, and you, it held on Ray going, I don't know what to do. And the movie had ended right there. It would have been a way better movie. Because at least you'd walk out going, oh, I wonder if they're going to do something cool with Star Wars. Yeah. And then the movie spends the rest of its runtime going, we're not going to do anything cool with Star Wars. We promise. (laughs) Yeah, but then you saw the casino planet in there, and I just just can't do that. Oh, the casino planet. I got to cut that out, too. That is begging for a phantom edit. You You could just cut and cut and cut and cut and make a way better movie out of it. Yeah. I wonder how many people got into Warhammer uh, as a as an offshoot of Star Wars. Well, I feel like I feel like there's a, a lot of people who got into uh, yeah, I feel oh, like there's yeah. a lot of people who got into Warhammer because they were disenfranchised with Star Wars. Yo, what if Luke Skywalker wasn't a pussy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, his name was Titus and he had, he was huge. <laughs> yeah, massive. Um, but I don't I know. I wonder how many people got into uh, Warhammer just because oh, it's cool sci-fi setting like Star Wars and just hey, we just like both. Not necessarily like disenfranchised or anything. Just oh, hey, it's sci-fi thing. I like sci-fi thing. Maybe just like my Star Wars. I, I mean, think. Star Wars does have Andor, which is the greatest thing since sliced bread. So all right, I think okay. that uh, I think Warhammer. <laughs> 40k specifically has a really like incredible like gotcha point of interest that i think more of its stuff need more of its visual media needs to take advantage of where all they need to do is put like a space marine next to uh, a guardsman or you know any normal human because people always ask the same why is that guy so big And then, well, and that's the rabbit hole. They modified to be that way. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. that's that's it's fair. The, that's the they got you now. They do. And hey, in Space Marine Two, that happens a lot when you're standing <laughs> next twice, to the guard. Dude. I mean, when you're standing next to that guard captain, and she comes up to your kneecap. Yeah. And it's like, what the f- like? I knew Space Marines were big, were big, but why so big? Yeah, but then so, they go a step further, and like, guess what? You're an even bigger. Yeah, you're a space marine. <laughs> you're a Primaris. You're rebuilt this way, and it's like, oh, wow. And yeah, I, I I imagine a lot of people are falling down this sort of lore rabbit hole. Just starting it. Why is Titus so big? Why so what big? are the things on his head? Why was he all carved up at the beginning? What's a Primaris? How is it different from a space? And it's just yeah, there's probably a lot of people googling a lot of different words they saw on space, uh, space Marine Two. Space Marine yeah. Two has a really other good thing. It's like, man, these regular soldier dudes keep yelling about Katia a bunch. Hold on, let me. Type oh that yes, into Google. yes. I wonder how 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 many new pings the word Katia has gotten on Google. What's That's it, fair. What's the deal with Katia? Uh, what's it, Katia? Katia stands for Katie. What is that? Yep. Types in types yep. in Katie in the search bar. Uh, did you mean dust? <laughs> oh, I meant chunks, chunks actually, but uh, damn. I, am. I, I can I can see that happening. It's like, oh, what's Katia? And it just shows a picture of like nothing. They go, oh, okay. Some cool ass <laughs> shit. That's what it is. That's what it is. Yeah. I can't find that image. There's like an image of the custodians, and it's like a custodian and a space marine and a guardsman. They're all standing next to each other, like an old 40s propaganda photo. And it's like, join the Imperium. And the custodian is like just, he's just like a train right next to the guardsman because he's that big. Yeah. Yep. I feel like, I feel like for a lot of people, yeah, because, uh, or, um, 40K was just, uh, the, the height chart. Do you, do, you remember, do you remember the there's like the height Art. chart where it's like a guardsman, a space marine, a primary space marine, a custodian, a primarch, a dreadnought, and it's it's just the it's Vulcan. just yeah Vulcan. It's just the height chart, and it's that's really, how people get into it. It's really funny because in Space Marine, the the whole scale starts to fall apart because of the character you're playing as. Like in one of the co op missions, you fight uh, a swarm lord, 
Um, and it's pretty fucking hive tyrant, big. but yeah, a hive tyrant. My mistake. Um, actually, um, sorry, my mistake. But no, this is important because the size of those two things is different. I assume. But you find a hive the swarm tyrant, lord. Right? It's like a. It's like named. It's like hey, a space marine captain versus like Marius oh, right, Calgar. Okay. So you, you find know. a hive tyrant, and it's pretty fucking big. It's huge. Yeah. But then you have to remember that you're taller than all the tanks in the game. And so then you have to multiply how big that thing would be to you. It would, yeah, it would oh, be yeah. the size of a building. Yeah, to a to just like a regular guards person. Yeah. It would be like a almost a skyscraper, yeah. Yeah. Silly. Oh, there's I'm, the there's the size chart. Thank you, Shy. What the fuck is that? Is that the Adeptus on the little stilt man? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a meme, stilt man. Yeah. The, yeah. that, that is the size chart. Like as far as the size charts go, that's exactly the one I was referring to. Mm. Without without a shadow of a doubt. Um that that stuff is is always is always funny, but I also like the fact that when you kill the hive tyrant, they specifically are like, okay, three marines would never take down a hive tyrant in their lives because this thing is insane. So, so they let's fuck let's, it up super yep, bad. Yep. So they, they drop they, a pillar on it and blow it up, and then it's able to be defeated by three marines. Let's stick a giant piece of rebar into his back, and it's missing <laughs> an arm. I think. Yeah, missing an arm, and mm-hmm. it's like, okay, maybe I, now this will work. Yeah, that's a really good uh, thing that they stole from like the from software games. They're like, hey, you're <laughs> fighting the biggest, baddest dragon that ever was. Now, granted, it's down to one leg and half a wing, but that's more than enough for the player character. Curse you, yeah, because you're bad. curse you, hell. <laughs> because you're playing, you're playing as like you know Glip Shido or whatever the fuck, and yeah, obviously. Whatever your character's always some like crappy dude. Mm-hmm. It's good stuff. I feel. Yeah. I, I'm wondering now, like, uh, like where where people are going to be getting a lot into Warhammer recently? Because obviously, Space Marine Two is the big one, but I'm kind of curious where they go from there. Because uh, there's a there is a massive disconnect between getting into the universe and getting into the hobby. Mm-hmm. And I, oh, I don't. I don't think. Yeah. I don't think anyone. And this is actually a thing I might consider trying to do in the future is has is doing a proper like introduction into the hobby well uh, like like, know, like I, a, a full-on guide from from start to so, finish so when you say the hobby you mean buying mini- buying miniatures painting them up maybe playing the game i so there are there are so many impediments to that there are so oh, yeah time many, yeah. money of course, I think money is probably the big one, right? Space. Location. So for me you know, and my perspective has been that like in the re- relatively recent, I feel that like the tabletop has not been superseded by anything else, but is no longer the de facto primary Warhammer experience because there is now so mm. much. Yeah. I would agree. Well, I, I like it's, like it's, it's I not, guess it's hard for me to say because I'm not in the tabletop scene. So it's We're hard for me to be the like the most popular Warhammer <laughs> podcast, and half of the hosts are like, I don't even play the tabletop. Doesn't that just say everything? See, I see, I, I make up for it. Actually. I make up for it because uh, also, I, I definitely don't think we're the most popular Warhammer podcast. Um, but I was just going with it. it also, it also special. makes up for it because I play in like actual like big tournaments and stuff. So I play enough mm-hmm. for the two of them combined. <laughs> you play more than you play more than enough for all three of us, yeah. I I love I love the game a ton because it's it's this perfect combination of something that you almost never get in the kind of world that you have, which is the ability to properly combine gameplay and narrative in a way that is just genuinely incredibly fun. And you get to say like, Hey, look, though, there's my eradicators that I spent tirelessly painting and kit bashing. And I just watched them roll super hot and take down a chaos night. And that's the coolest feeling in the world. I actually I made myself some chaos knights and I and I'm gonna do this huge like epoxy resin like river of blood beneath their bases. But I have a little nice. pile, and in that pile, any any person I beat in a game, I'm going to take the head of of whatever that faction is, uh, and like like source however like a, like a bits whatever person, and then paint that little head up and put it in the pile. And so like if I win, uh, yeah, that's what a chaos knight looks like. Uh, if I win, it's like, oh, a custodian game? Cool. I'll take a custodian guard head, put it in the pile. 
and like it'll it's almost like a tracker of of the games I played. And I don't know, it's it speaks to me. I in that think way. okay. That's that pretty there cool. is a huge amount of value and what you described is super fucking cool. Um and but as I as I am a video game man who runs a video game podcast and streams video games and that's my primary point of contact for Warhammer every single day I hear someone talk about the tabletop I just go you know what I bet would do gangbusters putting the fucking <laughs> tabletop on my fucking computer and you'll say oh it can't be done I'm like people already fucking do it um, yeah, and what? What's the? What was it? Moonbreaker, Bricky, that, that does I, it I was, really, I really love well. I, I like love that. Moonbreaker so much. It's such a good game. I'm so sad that it's not doing well. But like, I also you could can't do a forty k of that so easily. Well, do you know why it's not doing well? There's because, a lot of reasons wh- why. why. Because I don't know any of these fucking factions. Oh. This, this this doesn't say Warhammer forty k Moonbreaker on it. It does That's not. True. I, That's uh, true. G- games Workshop, a request. Please go get Unknown Worlds, who made Moonbreaker, and have them make you a tabletop variant of your game. So they're yeah, not and- going to do that until <laughs> what we talked about at the beginning of the podcast happens, which is the 3D printer apocalypse. When that starts to look oh, inevitable, yeah. then you're going to get... um that and i i feel that in my core because they've already taken step one to that which is giving warhammer to um creative assembly to do the total war games like yeah the Mm -hmm. total war games it's not the tabletop but it's way closer than i ever thought they'd let go yeah See, if they were intelligent, I, they would do it now before the 3D printer apocalypse because then people would play the t- the, t- the game on the tabletop like, version well, of the I game and be like, print this shit. I got the fancy digital one with the camera. And blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. They would they would instead be like, oh, dang, I play in this game. This is really, really fun. I want to buy myself a pack of eradicators. And then they go to their local games workshop they because they're Jimmy. Ouch, people like it's their rain simulator. And they're, J- they're Jimmy exactly. Jizz maker and they're super excited. And then, you know, it's- and then when they release new models uh like in real life they can they put that in the season pass like games workshop if we want to be like a moral we can do it like we're we can be good at this maybe yep. in like literally 20 years they do move that fast yeah. don't they yeah god i would love the moonbreaker thing too because like moonbreaker has that great system where you can literally gray out your your minis and actually like paint them and it's it actually handles to your Moonbreaker painting is, your minis. It's like Moonbreaker oh, is, is like so bad. the most upsetting game I've seen in a long time because yeah. it's like, oh my god, this is exactly what I want, just not this. Yeah, it's <laughs> just, I want this, but I want it for forty k. The voice acting in that game is incredible too. Oh, I it, bet it, it's it, great, but I never so even good. bothered to play it because it's not for Warhammer. I, yeah, I, it's I, like ah. Uh, I played so, played so much Moonbreaker. I I re I made a video. I I loved that game. The voice acting, it's all from mm-hmm. like famous VAs. It's so good. But you're right, it's not Warhammer. And I kept waiting for like a mod or something. Yeah, that would be a really ambitious it. mod. It would be a yeah. very ambitious mod. People have done crazier. And like yeah. people, someone like I'm looking at the top negative review on Moonbreaker right now. Game feels abandoned. At the time of this review, it's been half a year since any kind of update. No new content since the last community tournament in April. Unless you have a friend to play with you, you're probably going to be stuck playing a single player mode that feels tacked on. So much potential, but even the Discord is silent. And like, I look Aww. at that and I go, that's totally fair and a massive bummer for a game that you would play multiplayer. And then yep. I think about like, like Warhammer games get support forever. Like in general, like they get supported for a long time. Like the Space Marine 2 roadmap is two years long. Yeah. The, the, fir- the first year is adding things that would probably should have been in the game to begin with, like ultra wide support. That's <laughs> but weird yes. that they put that on the road, man. That's strange. I, I, the, really I mean, strange. the game the game was not done. There's three multiplayer maps. Three. Hey, we... They're good maps, though. Thank God. They're good. The PvP they is are. incredible. It is very fun. It is, oh the PvP God. is the best part of the game by a country mile. One of the I think few PvP games insane. I will actually can, play Can you a lot. imagine if it had three maps and one of those maps was shit? Ooh. Yeah, that'd be that'd be really. It'd be bad. a deal breaker, disaster. Yeah, yep. um, the, the, ma- H- the maps are good. 
The maps hey, are good. I'm going to ask you guys, do you think when that roadmap says new enemy, they mean a single new Tyranid or do they mean uh, it's a yes. single new enemy? That's probably. What I, thought, I hate oh. I hate to say it because I would have loved it if it was like, yeah, by the way, it's the Necron. I really want someone to convince me to be excited that they're going to add a new faction to that game. I was playing co-op in space marine 2 i was doing the operations mode but i did mm-hmm. i was playing as I, I painted my boys the blood ravens because i really like them from dawn of war they're the only chapter that speaks to me as the loyalists sure. um and uh then i noticed that there was a death guard color that i could apply to my boys so i just made a, a loyalist death guard and he looked kind of green and it wasn't the same without all the the goo right Mm -hmm. To which some dude in chat goes, you know, there's a loyalist color scheme for the Death Guard before they fucking got all gross. And I went, there is? True, there is, yeah. And I was like, look up Death Guard 30K. I'm like, okay. Pre-heresy. And I find the white, green, and bronze Death Guard uh, uh, look, which is like technically the Dusk Raiders, I think. Something Um, like that, sure. But... I'm like, oh, and that's a really cool color scheme. I've never seen that before. Yeah. I'll I'll throw that on my boys. And I did. And I'm like, oh, I'm more invested now because some guy told me some detail. <laughs> you know? Some guy told me some random detail I would have never known before. I would and never now I am found that out on my own. Completely would... invested in these boys again. What and was it, yeah. what were the odds of me typing in Death Guard 30K on my own? It, nothing. It was literally well, zero chance. I I don't. I want to say it's zero because if you just Google Death Guard, right, you're just like, oh, I want to look up something about the Death Guard. There's a chance that you might have gone to the wiki, and the wiki might have been, oh, this is what the Death oh, Guard. Oh, actually, were no. Before. There's a there's a Death Guard. So 30K there's a small chance right there. It's the third image. Okay, so it was oh, okay. possible. Yeah, it was absolutely possible. <laughs> Maybe it might not have the highest percentage, but, but it would have been definitely faster possible because the guy told me. Absolutely, you wouldn't have. Why would you have looked up Death Guard, right? Because so, yes, cool. sure, sure. That's true. They are very cool. Mortarians. They're the only green Dope faction mini. I've ever liked. I, I don't tend to go for green. Okay. That's it. Yeah, I don't That's usually I don't really know a specific color. What about the orcs? But, yeah, no, the, sure. whole, the orcs are all green. I mean, like, a, like, like if there's an orc green faction painted? that was green on green, I'd be like, no, I want the orcs that are, like, black on green or red on green. You, you want the red ones because they go faster. They do go faster. It's, I'm always angry about DK's orc voice. Why is that? <laughs> she's just really good at I it. I don't think it's that good. He's just really, he's just really good at it. I don't know. It's just a, the sound a it's regular a British, British person hooligan. makes. Yeah, uh, yeah and, and I can't make it. So, like, I'm, it's pretty cool. You do one, Pat. Let me see yours. R and R. Good eye, mates. <laughs> that's Australian. Is it? Yes. yes. Yeah, that's a kind of no, I can't believe that I, you've gone Australian. To, uh, I'm not here to fuck Arium. spiders. <laughs> Did you say we fuck spiders? I said I'm not here to fuck spiders. Oh, fair play. Here's a very important point that I think is extremely important that matters the most. Space Marines are literally just color swaps from the average user eye, which makes it very easy to customize your chapter in the game. And everyone just wants to be like, I want to play my white scars. And then you can. And that's great. Yeah, you know what else is cool? Isn't isn't that the whole reason the second and eleventh uh, whatevers are like lost? Is because you're just like, oh hey, I don't like any of them. I'm gonna make my own. Hey, this is my second legion. Nah, bro, this is my eleventh chaos, dude. No. Oh, they found the chaos, or it could be that too. No, sure. the, it no, can be no. whatever you want, right? They were they were anything. removed. They were they were expunged from everything, dead and forgotten. For a reason that I think Rogel Dorn asked Malkador about, and Malkador is like, Dorn, you shut your mouth. <laughs> Which is kind of crazy because it's Malkador. But, you know. And Dorn was yeah. like, Is it for kit bashing? And Dorn, and then Malkador <laughs> nodded his head once and then moved on. <laughs> Said nothing more. <laughs> uh, Dorn yeah, no, would be uh, the kit bashing. You're completely guy. right. Uh, like having, having the primary army have like a really simple. Like over, like like simple by comparison, like armor design that allows like beginners to paint them any color they want, and there's like already like what forty presets, like is a really yeah, it, like simple way to get your foot in the door. Because like painting the fucking orcs or the dark Eldar or the Nids is gonna be a real step up from painting my blueberries. It's also cool because like you know you're painting your salamanders. Here's a salamander. 
looks cool, Green Marine, but then you also have like a Salamander's character, which really goes into the Salamander's. I'm on vibe. fire, bro. Yeah, so you, you can like you can really it? up and down it the best way you Holy want. Holy shit, that's a that's a, a good amount of chapters there. Yep. Well, there's chapters, there's successor chapters for the chapters. There's so yeah, there's there's a lot you could do. So anyway, this is yeah. good stuff. Yeah, this good was talk, a very enjoyable time. Good talk, folks. Uh, any I, anything left that we'd like to kind of think about before we we wrap it up? I think they'd nope. have a lot more success with Space Marine chicks if they put, just put out a big picture of a big lady stepping on a guy, and then the freaks would help fight the weirdos. <laughs> <laughs>